So here's kind of a, in my eyes, Very nice. a visual of what Java looks like. We Oddly have, enough, that makes perfect sense. We have a bunch of packages that have a bunch of classes or abstract classes that have other classes that have other classes. Very nice. And then our little main function on the bottom right inside of our main bubble that With has access to all of this. Right. Yeah. So Java is kind of weird. And as we start going through this, and if you start reading documentation, you'll see a lot of instances of multiple inheritance. Java has a lot of multiple inheritance. And the objects and instances are very relatable. I mean, if you look at like any of these lineages, like that the brown line on the top... Any one of those are kind of synonymous with its parent. So you can see there's this like nice little ecosystem of family trees kind of spinning off everywhere. Which way? Beautiful. And then we had that guy, that the brown guy in the middle, that's sterile. And uh, he just can't have children. Oh, yeah. So Look he's that. just sitting there all by himself. Aww. All, all by myself. So let's take a look at the Java platform. We have Java Standard Edition and Java Enterprise Edition. The Java Standard Edition contains all of the most common libraries in that beautiful ecosystem we just saw. And the API... Right here. Nice. <laughs> and APIs for the most common application development. So the Java Standard Edition is that 80% rule. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Java Enterprise Edition... It's the rest of the 20. It has everything that the standard edition contains, but it also has additional li libraries for, like, more advanced to more complicated server-side stuff mm -hmm. and more advanced programming. Yeah, standard JSC is probably the most common that you'll come across. Yeah. It, it's just like Brian said, it's the 80-20 split. Yep. Um, also, uh, there's the Java runtime environment itself. This is actually the, the bytecode... Runtime environment. It's kind of the virtual machine that executes that bytecode. Uh, it provides a structured and standard environment for uh, which that bytecode can run. So this is the program that gets installed on your computer that executes your Java bytecode program. The Java virtual machine manages the program and external resources. So like memory management, for example, is automatic. Mm -hmm. And if you're having out of memory issues, you actually adjust the configuration on your Java virtual machine right. to increase memory. Yep. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily in your application. It also handles application runtime security. So untrusted software can be ran within a virtual machine that has very limited permissions. Right. And no matter how ambitious that thing thinks it is, it's still contained within that virtual machine. Yep. Which then in turn only has certain security restrictions mm -hmm. on it. There's like a little bubble that it runs inside yeah, that protects exactly. it for right. the rest of the system. So since the Java virtual machine executes bytecode, any language that has the same code can be executed. So, like, for example... By, by, the, uh, by the JVM. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, like, there's a thousand different ways you can produce bytecode. You could just make bytecode yeah. if you really wanted to. If you're really hardcore, yeah. Yeah, if you're weird. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but there are bytecode compilers for other languages. So, like, you could write in Perl or TCL or Python and execute it on the Java virtual yeah. machine. Isn't that weird? Yeah, it's crazy, Brian. Because yeah. it's just reinterpreting those requests into a, a standardized bytecode language. Yeah, absolutely. No big deal. Absolutely. Nothing fancy. So how does the Java Virtual Machine compare in how C, C++ works? Well, you guys know that when we write a C++ program, at least the way that we did it in our C++ course, we write code. We compile that code into machine code, which, as you guys know, is binary. And then we directly execute that code on the machine. So this little, this little box here represents the computer, and the code is being ran directly inside that box it has unadulterated access to everything inside the box right so when we look at a, a program that we generate in c and c plus plus that we build and make if you were to grab that executable and look at it it's like blah, 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 blah. yeah it's binary blah, it's blah. a binary executable it's file. machine language exactly for that specific system architecture yep now brian how is java different well in java you write the program yeah. and you compile it just like we did before but instead of making a uh, machine code file that's a binary executable we have this blah, 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 <laughs> blah, 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 bytecode. <laughs> and instead of that bytecode running on the machine, it will execute that mystery bytecode inside <laughs> of the virtual machine. And that virtual machine on the fly will produce the machine code that'll be executed on the computer. Absolutely. So it just puts that little layer in there to abstract your uh, your compiled code from the environment it's running in. 